Maar eerst de huiskamervraag. Wie van deze vier heren is de oudste? Mick Jagger, Tom Jones, Julio Iglesias of Cliff Richard? Maar goed, ze zijn allemaal boven de 70. En je vraagt je meteen af hoe is het mogelijk dat deze semi-bejaarde verdetten nog altijd in full swing bezig zijn en nog steeds miljoenen fans hebben over de hele wereld. En dat terwijl in de popmuziek ooit alles per definitie jong, jong, jong moest zijn. Dit was toen. Toegegeven, het gaat er tegenwoordig wel een fractie minder onstuimig aan toe. Het was de eerste generatie die zo reageerde op hun idolen en vooral zo massaal. Ja, het is maar wat. Ze begonnen hun megacarrières stuk voor stuk ruim 50 jaar geleden. Ja, je gelooft het niet. Cliff, want net als Jagger en Jones is ook Cliff Richard door de Queen hoogst persoonlijk geridderd. Tekenend voor zijn populariteit is dat hij buiten Buckingham Palace werd opgewacht door een alleraardigst clubje fans. Inmiddels heeft hij Engeland voor een deel de rug toegekeerd. Niet dat hij er slecht woonde, verre van dat. Sir Cliff heeft alles wat zijn vrijgezellen hart begeert, want bachelor boy is hij altijd gebleven. Tot op de dag van vandaag. Al eerder werd duidelijk waarom. You seem to have said I prefer a good game of tennis to sex. <laughs> I don't I don't remember saying that. No, but it goes for me. Uh, <laughs> I can but I can uh, I mean I may have said it in a joke of course but uh, but for me if I am playing a good game of tennis I wouldn't give it up to have sex. You know if I've hit if I'm in the middle of hitting a most fantastic cross court backhand top spin and somebody said to me can you stop now and have sex instead I say no thanks. <laughs> Come on, pretty baby, let's move it and. I'd rather do the singing. Yeah, and then what comes in? Shake, shake baby, shake my honey, please don't lose it. The rhythm that gets into your heart and soul. Well, I let me tell you, baby, it's called rock and roll. Okay. Yes. We kozen hem als vertegenwoordiger, zeg maar, van de vier die dus allemaal de komende maanden ons land aandoen... en van wie we dadelijk onthullen wie de oudste is en wie de jongste. Cliff Richard. Hij woont tegenwoordig op Barbados. Het is zo'n huis dat de makelaar hoogstens één keer in zijn leven in de aanbieding heeft. En dat op een plek waar het volgens de folders altijd mooi weer is. I've had many times I can tell you. Het is allemaal bij elkaar gespaard door dit soort nummers. Maar Cliff is van alle tijden. Zo verscheen er onlangs een nieuw album met nieuwe versies van oude rock and roll hits. Maar ook buiten de rock and roll heeft hij altijd gezorgd voor eigen tijdsrepertoire. Zoals dit duet met de Engelse Susie Furlonger. Hello Sir Cliff. Hi Ivo, how are you? Well, I'm fine, thank you. Are you an Englishman in Barbados now, or does Barbados mean more to you? <laughs> Everywhere the planet means more to me as I get older, so I travel a lot. It's hard to say where I really... I, I, I reside here in Barbados, but I spend the same amount of time in Portugal. I work in England and in Europe, of course, and I go to America also. So when our people ask me where I live, I say, I live on the planet. It's very nice. Now there's the new album. To my surprise, it's rock and roll, and that at 73 years of age. At this stage of your life, I would have expected a record full of slow ballads with poetic or philosophical <laughs> lyrics. But it's still rock and roll, Sir Cliff. I know. Well, I've gone back to my roots. I don't know if you've heard my album, but yeah, uh, when I listened to it... Of course I, I heard I, oh, it. Oh, good. Well, you... I, I was surprised when I read that the recording only took you two weeks. I know, because we did most of it live. I am very much in my comfort zone. It's music I know. All these songs, I have the original records on my jukebox in Portugal. Okay. It reminds me of, <laughs> come on, pretty baby, let's move it and groove it. Shake, oh baby, shake, oh honey, please don't lose it. Because it sounds <laughs> like when you started. 
Oh yeah, whenever I tried, I've tried to explain to my public, when I do a show in concert, I've often said to them, when I sing Move It, I can remember exactly where I was standing in Studio yeah. Two, Abbey Road, uh, and I don't feel anything other than 18. I don't know how you feel. When you're singing rock and roll, you need to feel um, the genre of music. It's an energetic art form. There'll come a day when I can't be so energetic, probably, but at the moment I can still move. I have young people now that come and are my band and my singers, and they come and join me in the front, and we do steps together and punch in the air. It's, it's necessary, and that's why I feel God has been very kind to me in that I have never been really very sick, and uh, I still have uh, good health, and, um, and I have energy. Vergelijk dit met een eeuwigheid geleden. En dan is in feite het enige dat veranderd is dat nu iedereen keurig op zijn, maar vooral op haar stoel blijft zitten en dat weinig fans zich nog de haren uit het hoofd trekken. Well, we just had a look at a clip from centuries ago. I can imagine that as far as your health is concerned, you have all the reasons to count your blessings. Oh yeah, I think it's a lot of to do with good luck. Uh, I, I, I bless my mother who always looked younger than me, uh, that she gave me and my sisters, I think, some of her genes. And so that's good luck, great good fortune. But at that time, did you expect that your career could last so long and that just like Tom Jones and Mick Jagger, you would still be in business in 2014? No, I didn't believe that because, well, in those early days, I, I don't know how old you are, Ivo, but <clears throat> they used to write things like, oh, this singer is here today and gone tomorrow or uh, a one-hit wonder, or yeah. an overnight sensation. And we, we began to believe that maybe that was true. And then after five years, I thought, wait a minute, no, we're still here. Yeah. After 10 years, wow, we're still here. And I think rock and roll was a baby when I started, <clears throat> and then it grew up in front of us, and now it's one of the most important art forms on the planet. It's been, it survived 50, maybe 60 years now. Someone told me once that Fats Domino made the first rock and roll album in the early 50s, That's domino, yeah. <clears throat> even before Elvis. And so once Elvis came, he gave it a shape, an attitude, uh, a way of singing. And it was a combination of gospel, of soul, of uh, gospel music, uh, country music. So uh, it was an exciting time to be alive and to start then was a great privilege for me. Okay, Cliff, let's have a look at a very special performance. <laughs> Congratulations and celebrations When I tell everyone that you're in love with me Congratulations and jubilations In this career spanning over almost six decades, I can imagine that you consider the Diamond Jubilee concert for the Queen as one of the most unforgettable moments. Well, those kind of those concerts that you do for the royal family in England are always special. I love those ones because backstage, suddenly, all of us who are competitive people, we are all want to fight each other to get to the number one position. Yeah. All of that disappears. And backstage, we're rushing into Tom's room, say, hey, Tom, how are you? Picture taken, please. <laughs> Robbie Williams, oh, let's have a photograph. And we all are like a big uh, a fraternity, a family of, of singers. And uh, we all, I think we all believe that if we all go out of there at, onto the stage and we do the best thing we can, we please somebody. Everyone pleases a different group. And by the time the evening is over, we have given honor to our queen and everybody goes home very happy. Uh, there's another moment that I consider as very special. That's when you came on stage on the occasion of your 70th birthday <laughs> concert. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I did the, uh, that was at the Albert Hall and I got my yeah. sister Joan and uh, her daughter to dress up as nurses because it was my 70th birthday and I came on with a walk, you know, in, on a, in a walking thing, a wheeler. And then I got to the stage, my sister pretended to give me an injection and I said, fly me to the moon and started to sing. So it, it was great fun. Fly me to the moon. Maybe the most important thing that happened in your life since we spoke to each other the last time is the fact that your mother died. I was surprised to read in the Daily Mail that if, like your mother, you would develop Alzheimer's disease, that you would seriously consider euthanasia. I thought, how can you combine that with the fact that you are a Christian? No, you can't. And you can't combine it because it's not true. And uh, Evo, you have to start telling people that they can't believe all that they read. My sister and I, say, I said to my sister, if, if this happens to me, would you look after me? 
And she said, if it happens to me, would you look after me? So we both agreed that we would look after whoever got sick. Uh, there was nothing about euthanasia at all. <laughs> and so, you know, again, we have to tell, ha you have to, I'm going to say it now. You cannot believe everything you read. I have read so much about me that now when I'm reading about my friends, I don't read it anymore. I, if I see something about somebody that I know, I flip the page because I don't want to read some rubbish and crap that people write. I, I don't know why journalists, not all of them, of course, not all of them, but many of them seem to have their own agenda. And rather than uh, place the truth, they want to add to that truth. And usually what they add seems to be destructive. It seems to be wrong and, and puts you in a very bad position. And for me, sometimes it's very embarrassing. It's embarrassing to face your friends. Uh, but my friends, of course, now know. They all say the same as I do. If they're looking at stories about me, they don't believe 90% of it, <laughs> which is a terrible indictment on journalism. Journalism is one of the most powerful areas on the planet, television, journalism. And if I was a journalist, I would be... Um, a bit ashamed. Yeah, so it is still difficult to cope with it for you. When you started things like this type of gossip didn't exist. There was no internet that spreads every rumor within a split second. Yeah, it's, it's always hard to, uh, to know how to deal with it. I have become accustomed to it. I know that it's going to happen, but I can't stop myself from having sleepless nights sometimes. You, know, you read a story in the paper, then you're thinking, oh, the only problem now is that now we have the internet. Yeah. Now the internet, people say the most disgusting things about people. And even if they're not true, they're going to be remembered. You can't rub it out. You can't wipe it out. And so that's a very dangerous area. So as much as I like technology, uh, that's one area of, of where we've grown into that I find really, really dangerous. Yeah, I, I fully agree with you. But freedom without... Yeah. Sorry, let me just say, you, it's great to have the freedom, freedom to do all these things, but freedom without responsibility is... Is, is ridiculous. It just, it can't work properly. Yeah. Final question. Is there one thing you haven't done in your life, but that you would really like to do? Yeah, I would love to do a duet with Elvis Presley. Impossible dream. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible because I, I don't know if you heard Natalie Cole singing with her father many, many years after yeah. he died and it was a, a beautiful thing to listen to. And as a, as a huge fan of Elvis and everywhere I go in the world, everywhere except America, of course, um, I'm not very well known in America, but when I come to Holland or Belgium or Germany or Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, all that area, they all say to me, oh, when we were at school, it was either Elvis or Cliff. Or Cliff, yeah. And so my career, my whole life has been Elvis and Cliff, and I was so happy about that. Even when I first read a, a headline in the New Musical Express in England, one of our top musical papers, it said, Elvis and Cliff battle it out in the charts. I was so happy to have my name in the same, in the same sentence as, as Elvis. So, uh, yeah, my dream still is um, maybe, maybe they'll let me do it one day. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. This time it was not possible, but I hope the next time we can meet in person again. Ivo, thank you very much. Bye-bye. 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 And, and looking forward to meeting you here in Holland. Thank you so much. <laughs>